Today we're going to be talking about mining different places for ideas. Some call it sealing. Writers call it inspiration. And it is episode 76, season 17 of I Should Be Writing. Well, I should be writing. And hi there, welcome to I Should Be Writing. It's the podcast for wannabe fiction writers, streaming live on Twitch, Tuesday, Thursday, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Currently, that's Eastern Daylight Time. Starting next week, it will be Eastern Standard Time. Um, my name is Mer Lafferty. I'm a writer and a podcaster and an editor, and I started this podcast when I had zero sales. And 17 years later, I've, well, things are going a lot better. I've got five books under my belt. One was heavily nominated for awards, and uh, I've written a Star Wars book, so it's been fun. I'm still trying to remember various things in writing, which is another reason why I keep doing this podcast, because the fundamentals and the beginner stuff is all very important. For example... I know I've said this before, but I'll say it again. I recently realized that my book was full of T names. And I've said, don't do that. Don't have uh, every person have the same uh, first letter, like Sauron and Saruman. What was he thinking? But then I went ahead and did it. So that's fun. My nano... Number is still low. I got words done really early yesterday, and it felt good. But then today I had to struggle with various podcast things. For the record, if you're listening to Apple Podcasts, well, if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, it will have already been fixed, but we had some problems for a little while. So, um, yeah, I've been working on fixing that. I think I finally got it. But, uh, Kids Are Asleep's work count is 7444. Well done. That is, now you're ahead of the game. It's amazing. Star Eyed Green is 59, uh, 5790. And Warm Towels on Hands. Well done. Glad you're taking care of that. And Under Pope, we started late because uh, Numbers Ninja and I were talking about baseball on the stream. So um, we just got started. You haven't missed anything. Just noticing this morning my character's first name so far are one or two syllables. Should probably mix that up. Huh. Interesting. Hossarian's here. Underpope broke a thousand words last night. Well done. But what I've been up to is working on my secret freelance project and NaNoWriMo. I've been having fun with my uh, Stardew Valley murder mystery. People are about to start dying, I think. So yeah, if you guys have any good news, let me know. My good news is things are still fine. Animal Crossing came out, the new update. I have spent thousands and thousands and thousands of Nook Miles on tickets to go get the robot octopus that's the new character. So, and have not gotten it yet. So that's sad. Um. But no, no real news, just kind of keeping on. But if you guys have any news, let me know. And if you have any news out there in the listening to this in the future, just email me and I'll read it on the next episode. And yes, Hugo Voting is still open. It has been open for a long time. I mentioned shaving off serial numbers with the Stardew Valley story. Do you write the first draft and then file, or do you file off the serial numbers as you write? Let's talk about that next segment. That's a great question. Good news is my nano count is currently at 2760 after only starting yesterday. That's fantastic. 
at that speed, you will um, you will definitely catch up quickly. Well done. I was realizing it's alarming that I can't count by threes, but I can count by 1,667. Which is a skill I only use once a year. But anyway, if you have good news or you don't think it's good enough to go on the show or whatever, the yay button is broken here. I'm gonna fix the yay button. Just, just don't, just you, y'all talk amongst yourselves. I'm gonna fix it. And it'll be all better and happy and fun. It won't be Halloween. No, it won't be Halloween at all. Okay, fine. We got confetti at least. We don't have applause, but for now, that's okay. So, I uh, want to mention again, we are sponsored again by Scribafile. If you have um, anything you, if you want to build a writing uh, workshop buddies, crit buddies, beta readers, if you're just looking for a community, then go to scribafile.com and you can find people there who are eager to read your stuff and give you comments and apparently some good, uh, some really good authors have come out of there. And they are kind enough to sponsor us again and I'm proud to uh, advertise them because it's a question I get a lot here. How do you build a writing workshop? How do you, um, or a crit group? How do you find beta readers and all? So that's, they are here again. So uh, very happy to have them on board. But yes, our main topic, you guys know I have a problem with naming people. I just talked about it earlier. I, I named everybody T names and I don't, don't know why. But Numbers Ninja said that, that Blaze Ball is a great place to go uh, searching for names, and it is, and I've done it. I've been, I don't know if I'll change it or not, but there's someone in one project I'm working on, the last name Ingram. That's not, and I'm not picking like the Orlando Fist Fighter characters. Might be fun, but uh, they just do come up with some really interesting names. And so I've been either grabbing first or last names. I might throw Mike Townsend in there just as an inside joke. But, um, yes, uh, that Daniel Beer says that uh, use fantasy name generators for my alien names. Elf and dwarf generators are particularly helpful. Yes, there are some really good name generators out there. Um, but I, f I find myself I'll allow myself to get stuck on something like, okay, I need a new person, I need their name. And then the first thing I start to do is I start looking at the books around my desk to steal author names. But I've kind of run out. And I also know more authors now, so <laughs> instead of just picking a random name, it would feel like putting a friend in a book and them not allowing or appreciating or whatever. So can't do that. But so I have been going to place ball. Yesterday I said I I tell people don't stop writing to do research. Just don't. And then I found myself doing it. I wanted something to be found in an urn of ashes and realized I don't know how much stuff get comes out of crematorium, so I had to go look that up. I found out there's plenty of stuff that comes out, but it's usually recycled. I don't think it's very nice when it comes out. Uh, I Oh, Scrivener also has a name generator. I've used that several times. Tree Lobsters use a random name generator. It keeps hitting refresh until one clicks. Stealing from student records. That's, that's daring, K. Kimmy. You need more of our books around your office. <laughs> yes. Well, I I used a lot of uh, Patreon folks in my new novel. I was 
there was a something bad happens to a shuttle and a lot of people die. And as they're like checking the manifest, I realized I do not have it in me to come up with those names. So I I just asked everybody in the Discord if they wanted to be dead bodies. So there's a lot of people who are dead bodies. And I hope you all remember that <laughs> when you read it. I hope you remember that you said I could use your uh your person, your your name as a dead body. If uh Todd is here, the tuckerization that you got is a major character. So not a dead body. I am breaking into our discussion here because I wanted to give a shout out to our sponsor, Scribophile. A lot of people ask me if uh, I know a way they can start a writer's group or join a writer's group or what to look for in a writer's group or beta readers or whatever. And I work alone a lot, so I don't really have an answer for that. But then I found out about Scribophile and it's exactly where people want to be. You can upload your stuff, you can get detailed critiques from other people, you can find beta readers, you can help other people out by giving them critiques. It's been endorsed by Writer's Digest and NaNoWriMo and Predators and Editors and has made several lists of 100 best websites for writers. There is a free membership and a paid membership and uh, I recommend you check it out because it looks pretty sweet even on the free level. But thank you for your sponsorship for Scribophile and if you guys want to check them out check out scribophile.com and I'll have that in the show notes. But I think the the drive to be perfect is still it's still too much. It's it's still I mean yes the advice is don't do x y and z but really you want to because you're not going you're just going to worry about it if you leave this crappy chapter behind you. But you need to do it. There's a program called Write or Die that does bad things when you stop writing. Like for the words, it is done in the... Um, you have to write in the window of the software. And if you stop for any reason... It doesn't know why if you got an important phone call or or just started looking at Twitter. If you stop, the, the screen starts to go redder and redder and redder until it's bright red. And then if you're not still not paying attention to it, it starts playing horrible sounds. Sometimes it's uh, a siren. Sometimes it's obnoxious noises. Sometimes it's peanut butter and jelly time over and over again. For people who legitimately stop to think when they're writing, it might be a little too anxiety producing. But uh, if you find yourself constantly distracted by things that really don't matter, it might be good for you to check out. For the Words has something similar, except the only thing that happens when you fight these monsters is your hit points go down. And your hit points, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody who knows, but... Uh, Hit points don't really matter in the game. They don't change anything. You just know that you have X number of hit points and you lost them all fighting this monster. You'll survive. Doesn't Rider Die also have a setting that starts deleting words if you stop for too long? Yes. I forgot about that part because I will never ever use that. Because my breaks often turn into going to downstairs to get a glass of water. And, oh yeah, I should probably check the laundry. And, oh yeah, it's, it's, the dogs need something. And, and, I wonder what turnip prices are. And, and, yeah, all that. All of that. So, yeah, it will start erasing your words. I believe that's the, uh, scorched earth function. But I do find that if you look in odd places, you will find inspiration. I like looking at Blazeball. I like reading the wiki on Blazeball because they have a lot of fan-created um, information there. And the fans are very, very creative in coming up with all this information about these people who are just names and random numbers. Good old Doom Ellis. 
terrible baseball player, drinks flat white. I wonder if the coffee ever comes into it. If it ever was there. But yeah, rejection sensitivity is the worst. It's, uh, in, in all cases, really. It's, I didn't know that was an ADHD thing either. I just thought I was really sensitive. I was put down for being too sensitive when I was a kid. Because, you know, <laughs> the way to make someone less sensitive is to yell at them. It works. Good stuff. That helps. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't have huge information for today because I'm trying to, like, do the daily show and do my twice-weekly shows. And I haven't done the daily show today either. Man, I'm, I'm not on the ball. I think I've been so uh, frantic about messing up my feed for my podcast on the largest feed uh, feed reader on the earth. I have been focused on that. But looking in different places, um, I started sort of outlining some stuff last night, and I'm calling it words. I started I'm thinking, okay, who's going to die? And who is, uh, I've got one of those, there were murders a while ago, and there are murders now, and maybe they're related, maybe they're not, kind of thing. So I have to decide who died in the past and who dies now. And I mentioned I was basing it off Stardew Valley, and uh, I think it was, was it Daniel that asked me to elaborate on that? Yes, okay. I am literally writing about Shane and Marnie and Haley and and Gus. I'm just putting their names in, and I'm not worrying about it. When I'm done, I'll be thinking about how to set them apart. I'm using more of their, you know, I, I'm creating more characters, more character uh, bits than obviously are in the game, but I'm starting basing on those characters, and I'm adding more and uh, stuff, so, you know, pointing out that there are only, like, two children in town and three teens or four teens and it's just it's a weird weird little place but i am just writing it stealing everything i can i even use the word startup saloon they're going to the startup saloon tonight i'd have to keep typing things like that nose oxygen tube thingy tk to avoid looking stuff up you know you just wrote six words that's six words that's great the longer the placeholder name, the more words for the count. Exactly. I kind of did sprints today. I didn't do a whole lot. I did some writing and then got distracted by the podcast thing again. I think that's why I prefer longer sprints, because it allows me to get distracted by something and come back and still write. But... I am really trying to surge ahead and do anything I can to get stuff down and worry about the details later. Because that's what you're supposed to do during this time. So yeah, I'm reminder your the end of the day goal is 6,667. I'm gonna be putting my daily podcast up. I'll probably be recording it soon after this, and then I'll be putting it up uh tonight. And hopefully get back up to the uh, regular, like, posting before noon tomorrow. Yeah, I like sprints a lot, Daniel. It's, it's, um, I think the thing is, it's better in, in person. Because the whole societal pressure thing is stronger. Like, this morning we were all on an audio discord and we were muted, so really I could do anything and I got no society pressure to sprint. And uh, that might have hurt me. I might have to turn my camera on. Y'all can do what you want, but I might turn my camera on just so I know that someone's watching. I have to write. It's my show. Crap. It's my discord. Oh, and just so you know, if you're uh, interested in this, 
little little tidbits about writing. Um, Tree Lobsters mentioned uh, TK, and that is something authors put next to something they know they have to come back to. It's uh, like, I'll usually do it after, I forget someone's name and I'm really going, so I'm just going to say, good old professor name, TK, and then keep going. Because, as far as I know, there's only one word in the English language that has those two letters next to each other. So, if you do a search, you're going to find pocket knife and nothing else. And you'll find all of your little notes to yourself, because that's what will come up. And if you haven't written about a pocket knife, even better. I must exclusively write with a timer now. The ticking clock definitely helps my focus. Any interesting? Yeah, I don't know how I I found it out either. Tree lobsters. I uh, but I remembered Atkins. Okay, now you're just just looking for. <laughs> okay, fine. That's a name. Name it Atkins. Atkins T K. T K Atkins. There's your name. Everybody can use that name. Everyone should use that name, and then they'll wonder. Like in fifty years, like, we find all of these books with. One thing in common, and that's the name T.K. Atkins. Good old T.K. Atkins. I don't even know what that means, Number Ninja. <laughs> I don't think Latka is English. Pretty sure that's Hebrew. You're just you're just trying to get under writer's skins, aren't you? Just just poke poke poke. Actually, Daniel Beard the uh. I can't remember who it was. Who wrote Ticket to Get Ticket? Greg Van Eekhout? Yeah, there was there was a, a if you look on uh Escape Pod long time ago, there was a name that, that there's a story title that's like TK TK TK. Someone stop numbers ninja. Numbers Ninja shows chaos today. And I'm do being horrible at actually doing anything worthwhile to people listening in the future. The long and short of it is, there are name generators out there. Don't let that slow you down. If you have to look something up, set a timer with an alarm. So it will remind you that if you haven't figured it out by five minutes, you have to come back. If you like things like self-flagellation, check out Ride or Die and do the Scorched Earth mode to start losing your words if you get too distracted. And if you're basing something on somebody else, on something else, just use the thing. Just say the thing. Just remember to change it on edits. That's the only thing you got to do. Make sure you file those serial numbers off. I created a character based on somebody I know that is not a very good character. Are they ever going to read my next book? I don't know, but I'm not taking any chances. A fir first name from a list of baby names and then last city to appear in my newsfeed. That's interesting. I thought that's like how you find your mob name. But then you have a whole bunch of characters with city last names, which one stands out as interesting, Duncan Idaho. And then like five starts to maybe think there's a cult. Or you could make a cult of people whose names are all cities. Secret aliases, that's good. First name is your favorite soda, last name is your least favorite soda. Coke, Pepsi? No. <laughs> Knowing there's a city intercourse in my state, I find that method very concerning. Yeah, there's... I grew up near Horse Bottom Ridge. I know. Yes, the Scrivener name generator. I kind of wish they'd upgrade it. They have some weird combinations in there. Like they'll have some culture's last names, but not their first names. But anyway, don't let distractions get the better of you on that NaNoWriMo. If you actually need to look something up, there's probably something you can find pretty quickly. 
don't go down the rabbit hole. And I'm going to end the podcast here, but not the stream. If you would like to catch the stream or uh, listen to everything we talk about, you can either watch us live, <clears throat> twitch.tv slash Mighty Mer, Tuesdays, Thursdays, 3 p.m. Eastern, or you can check out the Patreon feed, support at patreon.com slash Mighty Mer, and then get uh, the extended versions of all these episodes. You can support at I said the Patreon thing. I have a newsletter called The Hot Mic. I try to make it weekly. <laughs> I try. And, um, yeah, that's, I, I guess that's all the, the promoting I need to do right now. I hope that you're getting words down, and I hope if you are not doing NaNoWriMo that you're still managing to be creative, even if it's just sitting back and brainstorming, because that is part of the process, but not during NaNoWriMo, unless you're not doing NaNoWriMo. I'll stop. Okay. You should be writing. Bye bye. Do I, do this I should be writing. It's available to you Why under a Creative Commons Attribution Non Commercial No Derivatives license. Theme music by John Anilio. Art by Numbers Ninja. Production by Summer Brooks. And hosting by Libsyn. Find all of this information and more at merverse.com. And remember, we can't do this without you. Thanks for your support. Doctor. Yeah, I'm sitting home watching Doctor.